Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing a Poisson regression analysis using SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we want to analyze the contribution of one or more independent variables or predictor variables on one dependent variable or outcome variable. And sometimes the dependent variable contains the number of occurrences of some specific event. We refer to that as count data. So a dependent variable that contains count data contains positive integers. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, let's assume that these data come from a substance use disorder treatment facility, and we want to understand the contribution of gender and functioning on the number of meetings attended. In this case, these meetings would be substance use disorder related groups. So this variable would contain count data. And the independent variable gender would contain categorical data or nominal data. And functioning would contain scale data. For Poisson regression analysis, you need to have one dependent variable that contains count data, and we have that. And you need to have one or more independent variables that contain nominal, ordinal, or continuous data, and we have that as well. Uh, gender, as I mentioned, is nominal, and functioning is scale. The observations need to be independent, and we have that as well. And the distribution of counts in the dependent variable need to follow the Poisson distribution. So first I'll show you a couple ways to look at that to see if the dependent variable follows the Poisson distribution. And there's two tests I like to run here. Uh, one is the analyze non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, one sample KS. And you can see this is the Kolmogorov Smirnoff test. And you can set a test distribution here at the bottom. By default, the test distribution is set to normal, but you can see Poisson is one of the options, so I'm going to uncheck normal and check Poisson. The variable of interest in this case is the dependent variable, so that's meetings. So I'm going to move that over to the test variable list. And under options, I'm going to check descriptives. And I'm going to run the one sample KS test. And we can see that we have here, in, in terms of the p value, uh, 1. So, certainly a non statistically significant result. So, we would assume this follows a Poisson distribution. If it were less than 0 0.05, we would say it was st statistically significant and did not follow the Poisson distribution. Additionally, however, I'd like to look at the mean and the variance. So for that, I'm going to go to Descriptive Statistics. And I'm going to move Meetings over to the Variable List box. And under Options, I'm really only interested here in the mean and the variance. So I'm going to uncheck Standard Deviation, Minimum, Maximum. And I'm going to leave Mean checked. And then check off Variance and click Continue. And then OK. And what we want to see is the mean and the variance are similar. And you can see 9.81 and 9.7. So with these two tests run, we can be fairly sure that we're dealing with the Poisson distribution for the dependent variable. So I'm going to go back to the data view to run the actual Poisson regression analysis. And if you look here under Analyze, for regression, we usually, of course, think of the regression menu selection here. But for a Poisson reg regression analysis, we're going to go to Generalized Linear Models and select Generalized Linear Models here. And you can see that it has these tabs. We're going to move through uh, many of these tabs to set this up. So on this first tab, which is Type of Model, you can see by default it's uh, linear. 
but we're going to want uh, Poisson. You can see it's under counts, Poisson log linear. That is the selection we want. And then we're going to move to response. And here we want to select the dependent variable or the outcome variable. And we know that that is meetings. So I'll move that over. Then for predictors, we have factors and covariates, right? So here we would put nominal or ordinal level data. And here we would put scale level data. Unless we wanted an ordinal level variable treated as a scale level variable. But in this case, we only have nominal or scale. So we're going to put gender as factor and functioning as covariate. Moving to model, I'm just going to add gender and functioning in terms of main effects. Right, so I'm just going to drag gender and functioning over looking for the main effects. And no other changes here. Under estimation, I'm not going to make any changes. And under statistics, I'm only going to make one change, which is down here. You have parameter estimates is checked off. You can see below that include exponential parameter estimates. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And there'll be no other changes under these tabs here. So I'm going to go ahead and run the analysis from here by clicking OK. And you can see here's the output for the Poisson regression analysis. So you see here in model formation, it displays the dependent variable that you selected, in this case meetings. And you can see it's using the Poisson probability distribution. For the case processing summary, we can see that we have no cases excluded here. We had no missing values. We have 50 males and 50 females in this study. So that's the categorical variable information. Then under continuous variable, variable information, you can see the dependent variable uh, meetings is listed. There's a minimum of two, a maximum of 18 meetings attended. And then you have the covariate uh, functioning. And you can see the minimum score here was 31 and the maximum was 70. Then we have the goodness of fit. So of interest here in goodness of fit uh, mostly would be the value divided by the degrees of freedom. And we want this to be as close to 1 as possible. We have 0.834. If we're equal to 1, that would be called equidispersion. Under 1 is under dispersion, and over 1 is over dispersion. So here we have under dispersion, 0.834. And this is not ideal, but it is still relatively close to 1. So we'll move forward with the analysis. What we'd like to see here would be values, of course, greater than uh, 0.9 or less than uh, 1.1. But there are various factors to consider when trying to set any cutoffs. So looking here at 0.834, uh, that would in many cases be acceptable uh, to continue with the analysis. So then we have the omnibus test. And this compares our model against the intercept only model. So we would like a statistically significant result here. And we have that 0 0.000. We do have statistical significance here. Anything below 0 0.05 would be a statistically significant finding. Then we have tests of model effects. We can see that uh, we have intercept, but that's not really uh, of use to us here. We're looking at gender and functioning. And for gender, we have 0 0.04. That is statistically significant. So the independent variable gender with its statistically significant result would be interpreted in the next table. And similarly, the independent variable functioning with its statistically significant result would be interpreted in the next table. So then looking at the uh, next table, which is the final table in this analysis, parameter estimates, we have a lot of information here. 
but there are two main areas where I will focus. One is the contribution of the independent variables in terms of the exponentiated beta uh, and the significance. So we can see we already know the significance from up here. We have 0 0.04, that's statistically significant, and 0 0.000 is statistically significant. So we know that we can interpret the exponentiated beta value for gender and for functioning. And what this does for gender is since that's a categorical variable, is it sets a reference variable, in this case, uh, female. That's why you see female 0 superscript a, and the exponentiated beta value is 1. So what it does is it compares males to females in terms of the contribution to the number of meetings. So the way we interpret this, these values, the exponentiated beta value, is based on 1. We have to consider first, is it equal to 1, greater than 1, or less than 1? So if the value is equal to 1, for example, gender equals 0, which is male, if that value were equal to 1, then we would not expect any difference in the number of meanings attended by males and females. If it's greater than 1, we would expect that males would attend more meetings, and less than 1, they would attend less meetings. So what this tells us exactly uh, is a percentage, right? So we look at this value, it's 1.14. So we'll interpret this first by subtracting the 1. That gives us 0.14. And then we want to think of that as a, a percent. That would be 14.1%. So as we move from female to male, we would expect a 14.1% increase in the number of meetings attended. Let's for a moment assume that this value is under 1, say 0.95. In that case, we would interpret the value as 5%, and since it's less than 1, we would say that as you move from female to male, we would expect a 5% decrease in the number of meetings attended. So looking at functioning, now remember functioning was a scale that in this case scored from 31 to 70. You can see the value is much lower for exponentiated beta, right? 1.013. So if I move this decimal place over uh, two places to the right, it gives me 1.3%. So what that means is for every point increase that I have on the functioning scale, I would expect a 1.3% increase in the number of meetings attended. And of course we use the same logic if this value were less than 1, say this were 0.99. We would say for every one point increase on the functioning scale, we would expect that there be 1% fewer meetings attended. However, in this case, of course, we have a value greater than 1. So the way we interpret this overall is that in terms of the number of meetings attended, higher score on the functioning scale, so higher functioning, and in this case uh, being male, contributes to a higher number of meetings being attended. Of course, as I mentioned earlier, the data used for this analysis are fictitious, but if these were actual data, this would help you to direct care in this particular uh, substance use facility because it measures the contribution of functioning and the contribution of gender to the number of meetings attended. I hope you found this video on performing a Poisson regression analysis in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.